In this episode, we'll look at how to take a rushing river and make it look like glass. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It's the camera store that has everything for photographers like you and me. Well, here I am in the jungle outside of Mindo, Ecuador, next to this very loud and sort of roaring river here. And what I really wanted to do is capture this river and do it in a way that the water looks really, really smooth, almost like glass. Now to do that, I've got some special filters on my lens. But before we dive into that, let's first look at some contests brought to you by Adorama. I just want to remind you that Adorama has some terrific contests. And if you enter it, you can win some great prizes. Well, to set up this shot, I've done five major things. But before we get into those things, let me talk to you about the settings on my camera. I've set this to aperture priority mode, and I'm shooting at f20 at ISO 100. And the camera's going to figure out the shutter speed for me because I'm in aperture priority mode. Now, I'm shooting at f20 because I want to make sure I have the depth of field to get everything in focus. And I need to make sure I have a really slow shutter speed so this water is blurred, which will give us that glassy look. All right, so we've got all of our settings set up. The other thing that I did here is I set my, uh, my, my drive mode into a two second delay. So when I push the shutter release button, it will wait for two seconds and then take the picture. Again, I wanna make sure that my camera is absolutely still, so I don't wanna shake it with my finger. So I've done that as well. Well, the five things uh, we'll start first with auto exposure bracketing. And we talked about that in a previous episode. And so what I've done here on my auto exposure bracketing is I did a few test shots of this scene. The exposure, the auto exposure is off by about a stop. So I'm setting my exposure compensation to plus one stop. And then I'm bracketing and I'm taking actually five photos and I'm bracketing by plus two stops. So plus and minus two stops. So I've done that. The second thing I've done here is on the front of my camera, I've put a neutral density filter. I've got an ND4 filter. That's gonna cut the uh, light coming through my lens significantly, and that will allow me to have a longer explo uh, exposure, and that's sort of the, the uh, secret of the shot. You need a neutral density filter to really cut down the light. And then in front of the lens, I have a circular polarizer. What that's going to do here, I've got a lot of reflections. I can rotate this circular polarizer, and that's gonna cut down those reflections and so my dynamic range will be compressed. It'll be a much more pleasing image. A neutral density filter helps us to cut down on the reflections. You can see that when I rotate this neutral density filter, this is actually video that I'm shooting with this camera. Take a look at this rock. You can clearly see how those reflections are cut out. So by adjusting this left and right, I can adjust this to taste to reduce some of those reflections or keep them if I want. Now all that's left for me to do is take the picture and once I have that done, I'm gonna throw it into my computer, take a look at it and see if there's any post-production that is needed. I've got some difficult dynamic range here, some really bright spots and some really dark spots. So I might need to make some adjustments in Photoshop or Lightroom. And that's also why I am bracketing this shot. So I have a lot of latitude in post-production. Well, we've got everything set up. There's no need to delay. Let's go ahead and take the photo. Here are the photos that I created. I'm in Lightroom 5, and we're looking right here. These top five photos are the bracketed shots. This first shot is the one that I used exposure compensation. This is one stop overexposed according to the TTL metering, but it looks the best of the series. And if I scroll through here, this is the underexposed shots right there. And then we have our overexposed shots. So in that very first shot, let me show you some of the issues that we need to correct. The, uh, the big issue is we don't have any detail up here on the shoreline. This is just sort of lost all of the, the shading here. Uh, and then also we have, we're right at the limit of our whites right here. And the other thing that is not so obvious in this picture, but if we go to our overexposed photos, I'll just go to our really overexposed, we have vignetting in each of the corners. That is actually caused by our filters because with our wide angle lens, it's actually seeing the edges of our filters. And so to correct that, either we need to use a different type of filter system that encompasses the entire end of the lens, or we need to use thinner filters. I didn't do either one of those, so I have this issue. And so the way I've decided to correct this, I've made two different versions of the final image. And so I began with this image here. I thought that was the one that was the best exposure. 
So I took that, I created a virtual copy, and here is the, uh, the edited version of that shot. And so what I did, I'll zip over here to the develop module. All I did is I bumped up the exposure just a little bit, and then I played with my highlight shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, and vibrance to correct some of those things. So just some very basic retouching. And then the other thing that I did to get rid of the vignetting is I simply cropped the image. And so that was the way I got rid of those vignettes in the, the corners of the image. I just cropped it a little bit to get rid of that. And that is the, the standard way to fix this image. I wanted to also see what this would look like if I created an HDR image. So what I did was I took three of the images, the one that was overexposed by one stop, this one here, if we look at the EXIF data, that's the one that's exposed accordingly to the uh, TTL metering, a correct exposure, and then one that was overexposed by two stops. So I took those three, I threw them into Photoshop and created an HDR image. We've already covered HDR images in past episodes, so I'm not going to tell you how I did that, um, but let me show you the result, and that is this image right here. And so I'll put that at full screen. This image I really like. It's an HDR image. You can see all of the detail in the bank up here. You can see all of the green moss. I really like that. And what I was able to do is I was able to mask out the river area so we didn't get any ghosting. In other words, the, uh, the river wasn't um, part of the HDR process. I was able to keep that water um, pretty much the way it was out of the camera. And we can look at those back to back. So this is going backwards. This is the normal image. And you can see that we don't have a lot of detail in the shadows. And then here's the HDR image. There isn't a huge bit of difference, but I like the HDR image best. It's up to you to choose which one you like best, but this is the one that I'm gonna go with. Well, I really like that shot. Using a bit of post-production, a neutral density filter, a circular polarizer, and a long exposure, we were able to take this rushing river and turn it into something that looked a little bit more like glass. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. I want to remind you that you can subscribe to Adorama TV absolutely free. That means you don't miss a single episode, so make sure you click the button right now and subscribe. Well, thanks for joining me this time, and I'll see you again next week. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.